that's in the world all around us, in the stars, making constellations that tell us what kind, what time of year it was. Before there were ta calendars, there were stars. And that's all anybody had, stars and phases of the moon. And everybody knew what time it was, everybody knew what day it was. <laughs> yeah. Because God gave these things for us. So if you need help worshiping God, Study some science, any science, simplest science, complicated science, whatever lights a fire under you, because it will. Praise the name of the Lord. He is one. Anything Hallelujah. you do, it follows the God. Amen. Oh. Amen. Oh. Amen. Oh.
says, Lord, you are God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness you have done wonderful things, things planned long ago. Praise the Lord. Are there praise, are there praise reports this morning? <laughs> you know, just seeing all of you up there, you're all very beautiful and handsome. But the girls and the way they were snuggled against mommy oh. it, it's just it's such a beautiful beautiful picture so much mm -hmm. love there mm -hmm. you can just feel it well i guess i'll share what i learned this week there you I, go. I, I was reading heidi and i've always watched the the movie uh -huh. heidi growing up and i never read the book i didn't realize how spiritual heidi was the book mm -hmm. um because they take that all out in the movie yeah you know, it's a great, it's a wonderful story, but the the book is just full of wisdom. It, it's very very simple, but the the so Heidi's in the city, you know, and she's miserable, right? She's going through a trial, and it's gotten her to the point where she's not eating, she's getting lethargic, and you know, um, she confides in the grandmother, and. The uh, uh, she's getting really, really sick, and the grandma says something where it's so profound. It, you know, it just it le I'm at work, and I'm like, I'll stay focused, don't work here. But um, she goes, you know, the, you you've been praying, and and Heidi at this point has rejected the Lord in a way. She goes, you know, he he doesn't answer my prayers. He doesn't he doesn't hear me. And the grandma goes, well, it's because he's got another plan, you know. He's he's got you. You just keep on praying and understand that he's got a big, you know. He's he's working on something. It might not that be that you get what you're what you're praying for, but he's got a bigger plan in the overall story. And at the end of the story, if you know, no. Heidi finally moves back to the mountain with her grandfather. Um, but in the process, she connects the whole family together. You've got these city people, and they could, she brings about healing through her trial because she was able to grow a relationship with these people. And uh, the, the young lady who she made friends with was able to go up to the mountain and learn how to walk. And, so anyway, it was just a huge blessing for me to hear that. You know? Lord's got a plan, regardless of what pain, temporary pain you might be going or or going through. He's got an overarching plan that includes you because you're His children. Anyway, that's what I learned this week. <laughs> that was right. awesome. Are there yeah. prayer reports this morning? The Holy Spirit is moving. Amen. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's moving in your life, amen? Amen. Isn't that, are, aren't you encouraged? Yes. <laughs> Doesn't that fill you full of peace and joy? Yes. Knowing that God is on the scene and he's in control and he's doing what he said he would do. And as we're going to learn today, we're, we're going to learn that we're going to have a firm belief and know that God does not lie. He cannot lie. He does not lie. He's given his word. He's basically given his oath. He's laid it on the line and he's sealed it with the blood of Jesus. And he says, I've drawn this line has been drawn and it's gonna it's established and it will not change. It's firmly fixed. What is that? His his word, his promises, the things he's spoken to you over the years and the things that you're believing for. Like Anthony was saying, maybe the, 
you're praying and it doesn't work out the way you wanted it, but I can guarantee it'll work out to something better than you expected, right? Because Ephesians says he's able to do more than we can expect. Amen? We're going to... Uh, of the tapestry, we only see the back where we're weaving. That's right. It takes, it takes his eyes to see us. That's right. That's something to get happy about. And uh, we're going to receive an uh, offering today. And uh, tithes and offerings. And we know that uh, God's on the move and he's going to bless back whatever you give. That he's going to bless you. He's going to pour out his blessing upon you. In, in a mighty way, and uh, and uh, Naomi, will you pray over the offering? Yeah. God, thank you for this money that we give to the church. I hope it will be used for good things. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You can pass it. Oh. <clears throat> Oh, what do you call a cow that's just been given birth? Decaffe decaffeinated. There you go. There you go. Oh, that's a joke. Oh. Yeah, that's a joke. Um, why, did I, why did I say that? Because I just want to let you know God has a sense of humor. Yes, he does. Yeah, he's not rigid and rough up in heaven looking down, looking down saying, well, what, are those, what are those people doing down there? No, he's right here in the midst right and he's right with us and he, he he wants us to enjoy life and be happy tell jokes but also be respectful and honor him in everything we do say and Amen. do Amen. and as natalie was saying that uh if you want to learn to worship Lord, uh god more look to science look at uh uh gar yeah gardening you plant a seed and that seed like you saw those big, big pumpkins and out the hot it's amazing I mean, you you plant, we plant the seed that God has given us, and He and He causes the harvest, and he, from that little seed, it just grows, and He created the universe. And you start thinking about all that stuff, and you get fired up, and you get, you just feel like, yes, I serve an awesome God. He's for me. He's not against me. And, and I can I can I can I can do this thing called life. I can I can move forward day after day and, and no matter what I face I know God is there because he can take a, a little seed that's planted and great create something big huge and awesome amazing he can work in my life as I plant the seed of the Word of God in my heart I can water it with prayer and I can see God move in a great mighty way and and as we continue to pray and believe God we can just see and through faith the Bible says and patience we can see him move and answer those prayers and see those loved ones come in and see the our our, our friends and family healed or comforted or mended or strengthened isn't that good news amen amen uh we're gonna go to hebrews chapter 6 verse 8 hebrews chapter 6 verse 18 i apologize um I was encouraged by last week, and I appreciated the attention, and I was thankful, and but I also know that I can't do anything without without Jesus. Mm -hmm. right. The only reason I'm standing here today, it's not any smart move. The only smart decision I made was accepting Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, and uh, getting baptized in the Holy Spirit, evidence of speaking in tongues, and 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 uh, going to church. And being a pastor, that was a good decision. Well, <laughs> I kind of fell into that. I was just like, yeah, it was, I wasn't expecting it. But I'm thankful for it because it, it, it motivates me because you motivate me. I mean, when I was younger, I wanted to, be, I wanted to do better. I mean, before, I kind of, it was like early, maybe 20, 24, maybe in my 20s. I kind of like had a lull there, and a, and nothing really motivated me, and uh, and then uh, and I everybody goes through those ups and downs, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. But when I became a father, yeah. my 
the sons, they kind of, they motivated me. I wanted to be better. I wanted to be a good example. You know, I wanted to do. And I, I was always aware of my flaws, too. So, and sometimes I'd go, i live life, I would just live day to day, and I'm, I was wondering, am I changing? I, I feel like I, nothing's happening in my life. I'm just staying the same. I want to change. I want to be better. But I always felt like it's hard to be better. The things I want to do, I don't do. The things I don't want to do, I do. Lord, I need some help. Does that sound familiar? Yep. Romans <laughs> chapter 7? Yep. Yeah. yeah. But thankful, Jesus is always faithful. He's always true. And I'm, I am here today. And I go through lulls occasionally. But pe people motivate me. You people motivate me. Being married motivates me. Ooh, that gets me on the... I gotta... <laughs> yeah, I gotta... The rubber hits the road, you gotta... I have to... Yeah, because we're all... We're always growing. We're always... Uh, we're always growing and progressing and... And and never... Never say no to change. Cause that, don't be so set in your ways that you don't want to change how you think or how you do things because the whole Holy Spirit is constantly doing that. What was I saying? I'm just saying that... I'm saying that you, you, I'm thankful for last week, but I know, you know, it's it's nice. It feels good to get attention, but I know who, who's got me to where I am, and I'm, I know it's the Lord. Yeah. And uh, you made you you put my yeah. You, throughout the years, um, there's a lot of mean people out there, mm -hmm. right? Yes. But like in church. I'm sorry to say, sometimes there are, and you can really get hurt in church. Mm -hmm. But uh, certain people over here, over the years, have renewed my confidence and faith mm -hmm. in, in the church and in, 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 in fellow Christians. And everyone here is just shows me, and because uh, there was a time. Do you want to hear this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's a time that. I, and I don't want to go to church. I mean, because I've been hurt. I've been talked about. Things have happened. And I'm just like, but then the whole, Lord says, if you don't go, who's, you know, you got to be one of the guys that want to go and just be a witness, be a light. And, I'm, and I'd, be, I'd be irritated with some of the things that go on. And uh, and uh, then I, in like the, the denomination or the greater, you see a lot of things. But being here, it's renewed my confidence, and I, I want to go to church. I want to see you people because you're yes. you're fan you are fantastic. You are amazing. Mm -hmm. You're just I say, man. There's I say it a lot of times, man. There's such good people here in Shandon, mm -hmm. California, and at, at church, and I just want to applaud you, and I appreciate you, and and appreciate what the Lord's doing in your life, and again. The reason I'm here, it's all, it's only because of Jesus. Amen? Yeah. I never yeah. thought I would ever be doing this again. Never <laughs> thought. No. Uh, some Somebody asked me 10 years ago, I was in Foursquare. They said, um, 10, 12 years ago, it was a superintendent or supervisor. Uh, and he asked me, well, maybe you want to get back in the ministry and, or get back because I was doing music for the pastor in San Luis, who is an amazing pastor, by the way. Always had my back, always had my kids back. Never said a bad word about me, him and his wife. They are so solid, such solid individuals. But the guy, he asked me, you think you might want to pastor a church again? And I said, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Surprise! <laughs> I said, no way, uh-uh, not me. That's what I said, no, no, uh-uh. I like playing music. I just like playing music, worshiping the Lord, because it's simple. It's easy. It's fun to do, right, Anthony? You get up there, you play songs, but then, you, and then you, yeah, so. But, so the Lord, it's all because of Jesus, amen? Amen. He's got me here, he's got you here, and I pray you're just blessed by God and, and the things you you learn here or you you find here among interacting with each other that you just carry it and it's planted in your heart 
because it's not about the building, it's about a heart and, and, and the memories we make here and the memories of what the Lord is doing and we can just share it with other people. Because this, this church is more than the building, it's just a, it's, it's a yeah, it's just something that's special and unique and I, I appreciate it. Yes. Now that I've said all that, Hebrews chapter 6 verse 18 says, that by two immutable things, which is, it, it was impossible. What's your definition of impossible? Impossible. <laughs> Not happening. Not happening. What's another? Say a couple more words. Impossible. Can't be done. Can't be done. One more. Does anybody have any other one? No way. No way. <laughs> no way. Ain't going to happen. What was that? Unrealistic. Unrealistic. But verse 17 says, Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise, who are the heirs of promise? We are. Yeah. We are. He wanted to show his kids. He's saying the immutable Im immutability of his counsel, he confirmed it by an oath. By basically by an oath, by giving his word. He gave his word. He said, this is going to happen. This is going to be done. This is going to happen. This is going to be done. And when he said that, it was established because it's God himself, the creator of heaven and earth. He's saying something and he can't go back on it. Mm -hmm. And he can't lie. And it says right here, God confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay a hold upon the hope that is set before us. I encourage you today to lay hold of the hope that is set before you and that is Jesus Christ. Amen. This And what is the church all about? It's all about Jesus. It's all about lifting him up in these end times. The great moves of God it happened because the only thing they did it wasn't because they were so super spiritual. They were just real and honest and they were just they were just they were there was no some of the People I read about, and the Holy Spirit moved in mighty ways, and thousands and thousands of people were saved and healed. The Holy outpouring of the Holy Spirit. What were they preaching? They were just and over time, people try to. Well, what was it? Well, they try to figure out. Like it's so complicated. But I look back on these things and the messages they preached. It was just a simple message, and it all pointed to Jesus. All pointed to Jesus. And today, uh, denominations and different... There's some success, and we, we see it happening. But m most of the time, they're just good business people. Right? They got, and they're taking in the money. We're not all about money. We're all about Jesus. Amen. Amen. And, and, the, and, the, and uh, these moves you hear about in history, the, the people just prayed, and they had messages... And the messages all pointed towards Jesus. His love and his compassion. Also his judgment of sin. But they didn't have to fall under judgment. They could fall, on, they could fall under mercy and grace. And, and receive it as they received him. Amen? Amen. They, and so in these last days, what are we going to preach? We're going to preach Jesus. We're not going to preach religion. We're going to... Share that God does not lie. Amen. God heals. God is the same. Jesus, God sent the son Jesus to become a sacrifice who is tempted in every way that we were so we know he would he so we would know that he's gone through everything that we're going through. And he has a feeling of our infirmities. And he's not judging us. He wants to lift us up and mend us and heal us and make us whole. And our job is not to be the judge, but to spread the love and com compassion and mercy that he's so freely given us in these last days. And that we point our lives, point our message to towards Jesus. And if we don't know what to do or what to say to certain people, we just, we just talk about what Jesus has done in our lives. And, and share that God does not lie. He doesn't. He he won't let us down. The only people, I mean, your friends and family. At one time, 
They will let you down. They will. They won't live up to your expectations. But Jesus always will. And if it looks like it's not happening, just hold on and wait and be patient because the Bible says through faith and patience you inherit the promises of God. Just wait and see and you will see the hand of the Lord move in a mighty way Amen. in your life. Amen. By these two immutable things that God cannot change, he cannot lie. Number one, he cannot lie. We're going to learn three, three, three things today, about we, which we already know. We're just going to be reminded. God cannot lie. No matter what anybody says, what anybody preaches to you, no matter who they are and how spiritual they seem, if it's contrary to the word, no matter, no matter if they have years of experience more than you, if what they say doesn't line up with the word of God and they're trying to explain away why certain things didn't happen, you need to remember the fact God does not lie. Jesus is the same yes, that he was he that he was yesterday. He's mm -hmm. still doing it today. He still will heal the brokenhearted. <coughs> he will set the captives free. He will heal broken bodies. He'll bring peace to people's minds and he will help them enter into a, a perfect peace and rest amen he amen. does god does not lie well how come it's not happening in some people's lives and how come certain things aren't happening for me well we have a job to do we have a job to do and that's found in uh hebrews chapter 3 verse 15 hebrews chapter 3 well, what do we have what is our job to remember god does not lie they're uh, uh, Im impossible, impossibilities. When people say it, it's impossible in in our uh, in reality, it's if it's impossible with men, it's possible with God. We always have to because we lose sight of that sometimes, and we need to realize that God does not lie, and those things that were are impossible for men are possible with God because we serve an awesome Savior. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 15 says, Today, if you will hear his voice, don't harden your hearts, as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned? Hebrews chapter 3, verse 17 but with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they would not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? So then we see they could not enter in because of unbelief. Mm -hmm. You will not enter in if you... Don't say you won't, can't enter in because you're not good enough. He didn't say that. He didn't say you couldn't enter in because you didn't do... You did A, B, C, and D, but you didn't do E, F, G, H. You didn't follow all these steps. Well, you're not gonna. You're not gonna receive because uh, uh, you wrong. You wore the wrong clothes to church, or you combed the, your hair the wrong way, or you don't talk <laughs> the right way, or you don't look look a certain way, or you don't know Christianese. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. You don't know all that. Christian language. It's, he didn't say you wouldn't enter in. If he didn't say you wouldn't enter in, if you're, if you, uh, if you don't have a written membership to a, the uh, uh, hip hop church, or you know what I'm saying. <laughs> he, he didn't say that. He the only reason he said you wouldn't enter in is because you don't believe. You have a doubt. You have unbelief. Only there's a but. So he's saying the only reason you won't enter in is because. You don't believe or you have unbelief. The people in Israel uh, that were in the that had to go through the wilderness for forty years and uh, and they just went in the wilderness forty years. Well, they, were, they were just days away from the promised land, but they had to wander around, wander around, wander around. Why did they have to wander around? Because they weren't good enough? No, they were they were God's people. They were the Israelites. They didn't enter in or go into the promised land for 40 years for one reason one reason alone they didn't believe God 
And believe, believing God is another word for having faith. <coughs> That's why faith, what about, you know, find some, or learn it for yourself. To believe God, believe God. They've struggled 40 years in the wilderness, and God said he was going to take them into the promised land. They came back and said, no, this is too much. The, the enemy is just, they're like giants, but we're just like grasshoppers. I want to tell you today, you are not a grasshopper. Praise you are not a gra grasshopper. You are a mighty warrior. You are a warrior for God. 